Hello everyone! In the video I would like to give a brief description concerning a new set of plugins. I've just returned from my work trip to Paris and I was working for Les Androuilles Associés. I, sorry for my pronouncing, I'm, I hope I, I'm not making any mistake. And I've made some cool things there. And the most important that guys from the company give me a permission to share everything to public. So big thanks for to them. That's a really good thing for all the community. Thanks. Let's start with the smaller things. And first of all, I would like to talk about the camera locker. So this is the plugin which um, adds a new icon to the left upper corner of each pane. So if you, if you have several panes in your viewer, uh, you will see that for each pane you will have this kind of icon. And this guy icon is a clickable, so you can click and change the state to lock or unlock. So when it's locked, that means that if you try to change the camera in that pane, it will return back to the camera that, that was locked here. So and this is actually for some uh, specific use in production use case. But anyway, if you will find it useful, it's really great. So we have this plugin right now. So feel free to use it. All right, so next one that I would like to show is the after interpolation patch. And the plugin adds a new key shortcut for our timeline um, bar. So by pressing D, you can change after interpolation on a selected range of keyframes or, or on a keyframe under the timeline cursor. So let me show how it works. So if I'm adding a new element and just put several keyframes like that, like that and like that. So we have possibility to change a keyframe very quickly without using F curves. We can change interpolation by um, using the right mouse button context menu interpolation outer. But this outer mode, it's an old outer mode. And it's different a lot from what we have after in F curves, which is actually um, something like clamp progressive. And you see there is a slight difference, but anyway, it's a difference and it gives a different behavior on your uh, on your object. So this after makes interpolation not clamping without clamping. But if you press D, if you press D here, I'm sorry, I need to switch uh, a language. If I press D, so I will have a new uh, message box for what operation I would like to do. It's under cursor or all the timeline change into this outer mode. So just under cursor. And you see that the type is assigned the same after tangents that we have in our F curves editor. So this is the uh, kind of hack you can use for your uh, timeline bar. And also this plugin is a very good example how to use manager plugin to inspect Qt events in Motion Builder application and how to integrate your code inside. Post-processing. And that could be very useful to increase the visual feedback from your scene and to add a fix in real time before doing any rendering just directly inside the Motion Builder scene. Very simple to add in new post-processing. You can navigate the shading elements and then here is the post-processing user object, a new one. So simply drag and drop into your scene. And in Navigator in user objects, you will have a new one post-processing. Um, to adjust the properties to control this um, post-processing behavior, you can use properties view or the results of a Python post-processing tool, uh, which helps to, uh, to work with uh, all post-processing user objects and in separate with the list of properties concerning to each effect and the list of effects available at the moment. And in properties you have the same, they are grouped in folders, so there is also properties for each effect, but they are grouped. So this post-processing effect is, uh, works only for camera if you have user camera. 
it's not it, it will not apply on a system camera like producer perspective or any orthographic camera that motion builder has so if we create a new camera and switch to that camera then we could activate our post processing made active and for example Vignity. so we will see that effect of Vignity in real time or we can make a kind of displacement and we will see this kind of effect of a displacement there is also like depth of field uh, screen space ambient collusion motion blur lens flare and lens flare could track uh, you can set up the position of a flare directly because it's a 2d effect on top of the image or you can specify a light here and it will track uh, a 2d position from the 3d light point uh, on your screen then color correction which also could be quite useful uh, fish eye effect of deformation of a final image film grain if needed and vignetting actually this the current list of effects that which are available at the moment so and let me show some kind of example of screen space ambient collusion which gives uh, a good a small accent of realism and feeling of the derps of a scene so you see that's kind of simulation of a small shadowing which is pretty cool considering that we don't have any effect if I turn off the the scene b became very flat actually with this effect it's much better super dynamic lighting it's a shader plugin that you can uh, find in the shaders of your asset browser super dynamic lighting it's not a quite a simple extension uh, on a dynamic lighting it's uh, just a very big uh, override very big new set of features for example, it supports unlimited number of lights, uh, almost all material channels, so including uh, diffuse, specular, transparency, reflection, displacement on a vertex level, and normal map. Uh, so it, it needs, uh, I think, at least OpenGL 4 that your video card should support. And also it supports matcap shading and rim lighting like um, you have in ZBrush or Matbox, so we can very quickly uh, have an effect of diffuse reflection. And very important feature that I like a lot is the support for second UV set. Like FBX, when you store your scene, it contains several UV set. It could contain, but Motion Builder originally used only uh, only one. So if we create a texture just add to scene you will see that there is a possibility to specify uv set but this um, uv parameter is locked this property is locked so we couldn't enter anything here anyway we can do that by python script so with this set of plugin there is also python script to to set uh, to set a specific uv set here and with the dynamic light and shader you can create a new light map texture it could be for example atlas atlas texture for your baked uh, light baked shadows and for this light map texture you can specify a uv set the second one for your models which stored in fbx as well and motion builder could catch it but it simply don't use so now with the super dynamic lighting you can use it and let me show an example i downloaded a free model on internet so i will show on it here we have uh, diffuse specular and normal map applied and uh, also on the shader level we have some ui we can add a rim light which is could be useful for characters i think there is also to switch to matcap texture. You can download on the internet. There are a lot of examples of matcap textures. And we can switch to sRGB. If we do that, we will have more natural dark areas. So here I think it's not enough diffuse lighting. So we need to, uh, to add, I think we should add intensity. But our 
contrast will be better so model will look more natural because we will have more colors here they are not so light so we will win some dark areas of our of our color space which is which is could be useful to make uh, interesting looking for our model the last one that I would like to cover in that video is the references and I think almost everyone knows that Motion Builder has a reference system and everyone who has tried to use it knows that it's not ready for production on practice it has several very ugly bugs like locking namespace when reference file is missing or for example messing your meshes textures between reference set and scene set when loading a big scene and reference references they are they don't uh, don't support motion builder shaders at all so my goal during development was to make a reference to be ready for a real use for production and i've updated existing python toolset which is actually available in a set browser you can see here in scripts we have samples and references but also these scripts contain a lot of bugs as well. So I fixed, I hope, all of them. I hope. And also I integrate a special scene graph to store and replicate the shaders from a reference file into, into uh, from our original scene into a references namespace. And also uh, make a connection, uh, so restore and replicate all the connections between shaders and elements. So, and to extract this shaders graph, I developed a console application, like a command line application, uh, by using the FBX SDK. And this application helps to uh, grab a special XML file containing all information according to C uh, shaders graph. And uh, um, for solving global bugs of a reference system, I've made a FBX extension plugin and catch and fixing the reference during FBX scene loading directly. So there is the kind of type of plugin FBX extension existing in uh, any, I think, current Autodesk multimedia software. So after all these manipulations, so finally, guys, on Les uh, associate that they were able to use references in the production. And the Python toolset could be found here. It's a file reference advanced, advanced tool. So it's extended uh, samples with uh, some fixes as well. And among this uh, file reference advanced tool, I also integrated a little bit better reference system inside motion builder for example you have the menu for reference a file so let me specify a scene uh, which one on github so we have scene samples i will put some namespace name so we have here a namespace we can see what what type are connected and also we have a shaders graph in one super dynamic lighting shader and we see that even if we reference a file we have uh, we have loaded the shader as well and assign it to our model if we select a model with the right mouse button con context menu we will see that there are more items to control the reference all the reference as well so we can reload we can delete the reference bake shaders graph if we make any changes restore original from from the original scene also there is the uh, special user object in elements the description holder uh, that holds the shaders graph for each uh, reference that you added into the scene so please don't remove it if you are using reference this is for internal use and maybe in next updates I will just simply hide it so that's all for now I think um, there is also a virtual camera tracker uh, by using Google Tango tablet and 
a device plugin that helps to sync motion builder and tablet. Uh, so this one in a sense browser the device for Project Tango. So with the network connection you can sync uh, tablet and motion tablet and motion builder and uh, do some virtual camera tracking and recording. But I think I will cover that in some next videos or article. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching and big thanks for guys in Lesson Hoyt Associ because they it's really very helpful for the community, I think. So see you in next videos. Bye.